Hello, I've been asked to give a talk on nuclear medicine, PET-CT imaging of gastrointestinal and urinary oncology. To start off with, we'll have an overview of radio tracers. So radio tracers um, help identify, observe, and follow the behavior of various physical, uh, chemical, or biological processes. With radio tracers, we basically add a radioactive isotope so when um, these are injected into the body, depending upon the type of radio tracer we use, we get a different pattern of distribution. Uh, the most common radio tracer in use uh, for clinical oncology is uh, F18 fluoro 2 deoxyglucose or FTG. This is a radioactive glucose analog and is typically taken up by cells just like glucose. Now many cancer cells uh, take up a lot of glucose relative to the surrounding normal cells. And this ends up having a greater uptake of the isotope in the cancer cells compared to the normal cells, as you can see over here. Now, since this is a glucose analog, we typically ask patients to fast for about four hours. We ask them not to exercise for preferably 24 hours prior to the scan to avoid uptake in the muscles. And we also give special instructions for diabetic patients because they have altered glucose metabolism. PET imaging is positron emission tomography. When the camera acquires the scan, you typically see images like this when you review them in the axial plane. Um, now, most cameras nowadays are PET CT cameras for clinical imaging. It takes a CT image around the same time at the same sitting as the PET scan. Then the images are overlaid to give the fused PET CT image. There are also PET MRI cameras that are being used more frequently. And similar to the PET-CT, they acquire MRI images and fuse them to provide fused PET MRI images. As we mentioned just now, the most common tracer is F18 FDG, but there are other tracers that are being used, including the gallium-68 DOTA tracers for neuroendocrine tumors and gallium-68 PSMA, which is used for prostate cancer imaging. Now for FDG, normal distribution, there is high uptake in the brain, mainly in the gray matter and the basal ganglia. Normally we window the PET image to hepatic activity. When you do that, you see this intense pattern of uptake. So as you would window CT images for various structures, so you window the CT for the brain, you can also window the PET activity to better see the structures in the brain. This is a good idea. If you, most centers would scan from the base of the skull to the thighs, but if you do scan the entire vein, you want to make sure you window it appropriately so you don't miss any abnormal uptake. Distribution in the liver is typically moderate, and I just, as I just mentioned, you would typically window your FDG activity to the hepatic activity when you review um, oncologic PET-CT. Uptake in the heart uh, should be low because the patient's uh, fasting, which alters the metabolism. It can be high. You can get variable uptake in the heart on FDG imaging during oncologic imaging. In most cases, they would not be clinically significant. This only applies to oncologic imaging. If you're doing cardiac imaging, it's a different process. Looking at distribution in the esophagus and stomach, you typically have variable uptake. Um, if you see nice low-grade diffuse uptake like this in the walls of the stomach, this is normal. Sometimes if the stomach has collapsed, you can see increased uptake because all the activity is scrunched up together. You can also see increased normal uptake with mild inflammation or just physiologic uptake. So here you can see the esophagus near the gastroesophageal junction. You see mild uptake here. Uh, this is normal. This could be mild inflammation or just normal variant. The urinary system, uh, you'd see moderate activity in the kidneys, and uh, FDG is excre excreted through the kidneys, so you'd see variable activity in the ureters and the bladder. If the patient is well hydrated and voiding well, then you'd see something like this, where you're not really seeing any activity in the region of the ureters, but you can see quite prominent activity in the bladder and the ureters if there's a lot of retained tracer. Other normal distribution in the gastrointestinal tract, uh, you can see a very real uptake. Um, you can see normal prominent uptake in the lymphoid tissue of the terminal ileum and cecum. 
And when you're looking at colorectal cancer, it's important not to call that malignancy. That would be a normal variant. If you have patients with diabetes who are taking metformin, you can see prominent uptake in the intestines. You can also see uptake in the Walder's ring and the salivary glands, uh, the testes, uterus, ovaries, and the thymus in younger patients. For the uterus and ovaries, uh, these are this typically seen in menstruating women and is physiologic in nature. In the bone marrow and the muscles, you should not be seeing any prominent uptake. However, exercise can cause uptake, which would typically be uh, symmetrical. Sometimes if the patient has muscle spasm on one side, then it may be unilateral or if they've had surgeries or other things that change the muscle dynamics. The advantages of PET-CT is that you can image metabolic changes, which often predate anatomic changes. So you would see malignancy on FDG, which you would not see on anatomic imaging. A response similarly can be seen earlier on FDG imaging. So you may have a lymph node or a mass that is not changed by size criteria, but it is responding based on PET criteria. Small metastases can also be detected better. They may not be enlarged by size criteria, but they may be intensely FDG avid. FDG also helps uh, planning more appropriate treatment. So if the patient is not responding well, you can change treatment earlier than you would be able to otherwise. It provides some prognostic information on what to expect for the patient. And it can also help detect coexisting disease, such as other malignancies. Limitations of FDG imaging. You can have false positives and false negatives. False positives would be normal variants, such as uptake in the thymus, uptake in brown fat. Other malignancies can also be very avid. FDG is not very specific. You can have uptake in non-malignant conditions, such as infection, inflammation, granulomatous disease, which includes sarcoidosis and tuberculosis. Post-treatment, you can also see uptake in the bone marrow, spleen, and in post-radiotherapy, you can see uptake in the lungs and you can also sometimes see thymic rebound, which would show a lot of uptake in the thymus. False negatives, if the tumor is small, microscopic, uh, often sub-centimeter, you can have poor FDG uptake. A lot of times with uh, pulmonary nodules, you may not see uptake, particularly if they're sub-centimeter. Many tumors are not FDG avid because they don't have increased glucose metabolism or because they clear FDG very rapidly. And so by the time you scan the patient, you don't see abnormal uptake relative to background activity. Patient preparation is important. So um, if the patient has not fasted properly, if the patient is diabetic and their blood sugar level is high, you may have a poor FDG PET scan, which would underappreciate the actual extent of disease. You also have high background FDG uptake um, for various reasons, and that may mask underlying FDG avid disease. High uptake can be seen normally, for example, in the gray matter, and you can also see it with post-treatment changes and inflammatory changes. Well, I'll go over a few examples of some false positives. So here's uptake, FDG uptake in the thymus. You can see thym the thymus over here in CT. You can see that there's uptake there. On fused images, you can see it's greater than the adjacent blood pool activity. So this can be seen normally in younger patients, say up to the mid-20s. You can also see it in thymic rebound, which can be seen even in older patients. It's important to differentiate this from any tumor you suspect in this region. Usually this is a concern in a lymphoma. And you want to make sure you don't miss this because you don't want to recommend biopsy of normal thymic tissue if you can avoid it. Looking at FDG uptake in brown fat, we can see that prominent FDG uptake can be seen in brown fat and this is physiologic uptake. If you look at the images on the left, you can see that there's a lot of FDG uptake here. On the fused images, you can see the uptakes in the neck, and it looks pretty prominent. When you look at the CT images, you can see that it's just fat corresponding to these regions of uptake. There are no nodes there. Compare this to the images on the right. Not so prominent FDG uptake over here, but on the fused images and the CT images, you can see this activity corresponds to this small node. So this is nodal metastasis. So common sites of uptake for brown fat include the neck, axilla, thorax, and upper abdomen. As we see here, you use the CT to differentiate brown fat uptake from nodes. On brown, in brown fat, you only see fat on the CT images compared to nodes. And this is typically seen when patient is cold. So by keeping the patient warm, you can reduce the chance of uptake in brown fat. 
This activity, as you can see, is quite prominent, so it can obscure true positive FDG AVID nodes. So even if you see this pattern of uptake and you see that they're spotted in most areas, you still want to carefully look for any nodes that might be masked in that area. FDG uptake can also be seen with post-chemotherapy changes. It is typically diffuse, more prominent than hepatic activity. It can be seen in the bone marrow, as we see over here, and it can be seen in the spleen. This can be seen with chemotherapy and with GCSF. With PET images, we typically do quantification for clinical PET reporting. So we have the standardized uptake value. There are several equations that are used to generate this value. This is a typical equation that we use. Some of them use lean body weight and other factors. So it would depend on the institution and uh, what their protocol is. Most centers would use SUV max to report. Uh, in the reports, this looks at the maximum voxel value of SUV in the tumor. For example, we've dropped a 3D region of interest here. Looking at the maximal voxel value, it gives us an SUV of 10.6. Now, other values include SUV mean, which gives the SU average SUV value within a region of interest. Uh, the metabolic tumor volume, MTV the total glycolytic volume, and various SUV ratios. While these are seen in the literature and in some institutions, most places will focus on SUV max currently. The measurements can and do vary from institution to institution because the software and hardware used for acquiring PET scans are usually not standardized. So unless you have standardized your PET acquisition, you cannot compare values from one center to the other. This also means if you're, when you're looking at the literature, you see an absolute cutoff SUV value, you probably won't be able to apply it to your center, unless it, the study obviously was done at your center on the same camera. Moving on to esophageal cancer, it, uh, the esophagus uh, basically goes from the upper esophageal sphincter and anything up to within two centimeters of the gastroesophageal junction, anything from here is considered um, esophageal cancer. There are two types, adenocarcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma. Both show intense FTG uptake, and typically the higher the uptake, the worse the prognosis. This means there tends to be, uh, with higher uptake, early tumor recurrence and poor disease-free survival. Five-year survival is around 37% for localized, 18 for regional spread and local nodes, and 3% with metastases. FTG um, is good for staging disease in about 40% of patients and changes patient management in about 10 to 40% of patients, depending upon the study you're looking at. So in this example here, you can see this mass on CT. You can see intense FTG uptake, and you can see on the fused images that it matches this esophageal mass. Normal variants and small primaries. So uh, you can normally see a prominent FTG uptake in the retrocardiac region, in the thoracic esophagus, and this is a normal variant. You can see diffuse uptake along the esophagus that could be due to peristalsis or spasm or esophagitis. You can see that pattern of uptake here. Um, T1 tumors may not be detected with FTG. This may be because they're very small and because of partial voluming. Uh, effects. However, even if the tumor is small, you may still detect distant disease, as even small tumors can have extensive nodal or metastatic disease. So here you can see the uptake in the esophagus, and uh, you can see on fused images it localizes nicely. This is actually a um, lymphoma patient. Local extension of esophageal cancer. So it's less likely to be resectable if it involves the heart, great vessels, trachea, liver, pancreas, lung, or spleen. It can also extend to the aorta, vertebral body, or trachea. Nodal extension, uh, typically local extension, uh, tends to extend from the periosophageal region to the celiac nodal basis. Celiac nodes are usually associated with worse uh, prognosis. Lymph nodes that you see anywhere outside of this would be considered metastatic disease. So the drainage patterns, uh, the upper third uh, of the esophagus typically drains to the paratracheal and internal jugular nodes. The middle third typically drains to the mediastinal nodes, and the distal third to the gastrohepatic and celiac nodes.
In the gastric cardium below, you can see activity in the celiac axis, platic hilum, and the paraortic region. False positive and negative FTG avid nodes. So FTG can underestimate the extent of nodal metastases. Uh, this is uh, usually big if they're small in size. Um, if you see an FTG avid node and you're wondering if it's a uh, metastasis, tissue sampling is a good idea. False uptake can be seen because FTG is rather nonspecific. So you can see it with reactive changes, granulomatous uh, adenopathy, for example, or sarcoidosis. So the history or the pattern of distribution can help with that. For example, sarcoidosis typically has a symmetrical pattern of distribution in the hilum at a certain stage. You can also uh, get false positive um, FDG uptake from brown fat, but as we've seen, if you look at the CT images, that can help with that. So metastases from esophageal cancer, uh, typical sites are the liver, lungs, bones, and adrenals, and um, adenocarcinoma, particularly at the gastroesophageal junction, is probably going to metastasize to the entire abdominal site, such as the liver and peritoneum. With squamous cell carcinoma, it's typically intrathoracic. FTD changes can also be um, can change preoperative management by detecting metastases. Common sites are supraclavicular, abdominal nodes, liver, and bone. So this is the um, image we saw a few slides ago. The focal uptake here is in a neck node in this patient with esophageal cancer. Early response. So decrease in uh, FTG uptake typically indicates a better response and better outcome. No response um, would allow an earlier change to therapy. In adenocarcinoma, if we look at the pre-treatment and uh, post-treatment, uh, say with about two weeks into chemotherapy, using a cutoff of about 35%, uh, if there's a decrease of greater than or equal to 35%, it's considered favorable compared to less than 35%. For squamous cell carcinoma, Again, imaging at two weeks, we're looking at a cutoff of about 30% for chemoradiotherapy. And when we're doing definitive chemoradiotherapy in non-surgical patients in about four to five weeks, a cutoff of about 51% is reported as having a more favorable five-year progression-free survival. Looking at end-of-treatment response, um, if we have a no uptake or a minimal uptake at the end of treatment, uh, this would be uh, imaging would be acquired about five to six weeks after. This is typically considered uh, to have better prognosis. Uh, if we have neoadjuvant chemotherapy, if there's a 67% decrease in the SUV maximum baseline, this is considered a good response. If we have a negative uh, PET scan after chemotherapy, we can't exclude residual uh, disease, but we do consider these patients to have better survival and have better clinical outcome. Sites of recurrence for esophageal cancer include the mediastinum bones and lungs. Uh, rare sites include the brain, pleura, and skin. Pets reported as having a sensitivity of 96% uh, and specificity of 78% for detecting recurrent disease and defining the extent. It changes clinical management in about 27% of cases. CT is better for assessing pulmonary metastases. For pretreatment imaging of gastric cancer, FDG would detect about 55% of the primary sites. Those that would probably not be detected on FDG imaging include uh, diffuse gastric cancer along the wall and the mucinous type of gastric cancer. FDG is reported as more accurate for staging, uh, about 68% compared to PET alone or CT alone. The SUV max uh, uptake at baseline is predictive for tumor recurrence. For nodal staging, uh, PET-CT has been reported having a sensitivity of 41-74%, to 74%, which is less sensitive than CT, with a specificity of 75-100%, to 100%, which is more specific than CT. Perigastric nodes often cannot be distinguished from the primary tumor or the normal gastric wall, so you may miss local regional nodal disease on the PET scan. FTG avid nodes, however, do suggest worse prognosis and possibly incurable disease. FTG PET CT is often used for the detection of distant metastases. So, looking at the site of metastases, um, typically solid organs, the peritoneum, and distant lymph nodes. Looking at the sensitivity and specificity, 85 and 74 for the liver, and 
not as good for the other sites. You can, um, solid organ metastases are, can be rare at initial diagnosis. The main pathway is hematogenous spread, common sites of the liver, lungs, and prenals, and skeleton. For the bone, sensitivity is about 30%, and about specificity, however, is 82%. Despite these numbers, FDG PET CT has upstaged about 5 to 10 percent of patients by identifying occult metastatic lesions and helped avoid uh, surgeries. The recurrence of gastric cancer, FDG PET, has changed management in about 20 percent of patients. Recurrence is more likely to be seen um, FDG avid recurrence when the primary gastric tumor was FDG avid itself. Sensitivity has been reported at 91%, with a specificity of about 61.5%. This may be because of post-treatment changes reducing specificity. If you see elevated ALP levels, uh, then you need to exclude bone metastases. Uh, bone scintigraphy is highly sensitive for this, but has low specificity. And because of that, it's good as a screening test and it is helpful because it can detect metastases about three months before uh, radiography. Common sites of bone metastases for gastric cancer include the vertebrae, ribs, pelvic bones, femur, scapula, and clavicle. In colon cancer, diffuse uptake in the bowel loops can be considered a normal variant. Uh, it can also be seen from inflammation, peristalsis, and as we mentioned before, from certain medications such as metformin in diabetic patients. If we see focal uptake, uh, this is mostly uh, malignant or pre-malignant, though a few are benign, but less than 70%. Some types of colon cancer, such as mucinous adenocarcinomas, have poor avidity for FDG. Um, FDG colonography has been described in the literature as detecting more lesions than CT. For local extension of uh, colon cancer, while this may not be best assessed on FDG imaging, these are the uh, common routes for ascending colon, descending colon, and rectum. It's primarily retroperitoneal. It can invade the adjacent retroperitoneal organs, such as the kidneys and pancreas. In uh, locally advanced rectal cancer, it can involve the pelvic viscera, and it can also have perineural uh, spread. The nodal spread of colorectal um, cancer for the right colon, uh, it can extend along the vessels of the cecum descending colon to the root of the superior mesenteric artery, for the proximal transverse colon. You can extend along the mesocolic side of the colon to the right or middle colic vessels at the root of the mesocolon and anterior to the head of the pancreas. If you have your primary and the distal transverse colon and splenic flexure, the nodal metastases may extend along the left middle colic vessels to the inferior mesenteric vein. Descending colon and sigmoid colon, they can extend along the uh, left ascending colic and sigmoidal vessels and then to the origin of the inferior mesenteric artery, proximal uh, rectal, and distal rectal, and low rectal. Similarly, extend to nearby vessels. At the recto sigmoid junction, uh, perirectal nodes can extend um, along the sigmoid mesenteric chain. Now, contrast-enhanced FDG PET-CT has been described as being more sensitive and or more specific compared to non-contrast PET-CT or CT for nodal staging. So in this patient, you can see this FDG avid mass here, and you can see this focal uptake here, which corresponds to a small node. Metastases from uh, colon cancer, common sites are peritoneal spread, liver, lungs, adrenals, and the spleen. Peritoneal spread can be seen in about 43% of patients, and commonly can be seen in the region of the ovaries. Uh, liver can often be the first site of metastases. In about 30 to 40% of patients, it can be the only site of metastases. And about 40 to 50 can develop liver metastases after surgery. Uh, lung metastases are more likely in low rectal cancers. FTG uh, can change management in about 24% of uh, patients.
and it can detect extrahepatic metastases not detected on conventional imaging in about 32% of patients. In this image over here, we can see mildly FDG avid deposits along the peritoneum and in the omentum. So for recurrence of colon cancer, it's typically seen in the liver or lungs, but can also occur at the site of the previous tumor. Um, hepatic metastases in about 20 to 40 percent of patients on recurrence, and local recurrence is um, more common in rectal cancer. False positives can be seen with post-treatment changes, including post-operative scars, post-radiation uh, therapy. If you have post-chemotherapy changes, you can have a lot of uptake in the marrow. Those could possibly obscure less avid bone metastases. Sensitivity and specificity for recurrence. Uh, local has been reported as about 93 to 98%. Extra abdominal, 100 to 97%. Pelvic to 98 to 97%. FTG uptake in the recurrence of colon cancer um, has a relationship to the CEA levels. FTG has been reported as more accurate in detecting recurrence compared to CEA, and the sensitivity and specificity has been of FTG has just been described as varying depending, um, depending on the corresponding CEA level in the literature. Uh, while we have these numbers, this is one study, so we probably need more data to get a better idea of how this would work. Looking at FTG uptake in pancreatic cancer, in uh, pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma, uptake is typically uh, focal and homogeneous and solitary in pancreatitis. Um, in contrast, uptake would be more heterogeneous, multifocal, sometimes it can be diffuse. Uh, FTG uptake is useful preoperatively in diagnosing patients with suspected pancreatic cancer when no lesion is seen on CT. Um, since patients can have hyperglycemia, this can decrease the sensitivity of detecting pancreatic cancer since FTG is a glucose analog. In staging pancreatic cancer, using IV contrast CT can improve the sensitivity of FTG. Um, the SUV of nodal lesions is prognostic, uh, and more so than the primary tumor's SUV. FTG has higher specificity uh, compared to uh, CT and higher sensitivity. FTG is also reported as changing management in about 12 to 30% of cases, and contrast-enhanced FTG has superior sensitivity and specificity to unenhanced SCT. If the primary tumor has a low SUV max, or if after therapy the SUV has just decreased by more than 60%, the patient will typically have better overall survival and progression-free survival. In recurrence, um, typically um, it's frequent within two years, mainly in the post-operative bed, also in the liver and the peritoneum. Uh, PET has been described, FDG PET has been described as being more sensitive compared to um, CT in detecting uh, recurrent pancreatic cancer, but has similar specificity. FDG PET CT has also revealed additional metastases in pancreatic cancer recurrence. It can also be useful in distinguishing treatment-related fibrosis and inflammation from residual or progressive tumors. In cholangiocarcinoma, uh, FTG has good sensitivity and specificity, but mainly for intrahepatic compared to extrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. It also has been reported as having good sensitivity and specificity for distant metastases, but low sensitivity but high specificity for nodal metastases. It has been reported as having higher accuracy compared to, CC, uh, compared to CT for regional lymph node metastases and distant metastases. Looking at uh, the primary site of hepatocellular carcinoma, FDG is useful in detecting post-operative tumor recurrence, uh, response to liver-directed therapy, and in predicting tumor recurrence post-liver transplant. HCC is more likely to be FDG avid when the alpha fetoproteins are greater than 200, and FDG avid patients at presentation are more likely to have early recurrence. If we look at another tracer in comparison to FDG, IC11 choline, 
we can see that um, FDG has higher sensitivity for poorly differentiated hepatocellular carcinomas, whereas C11 choline has better sensitivity for well-differentiated to moderately differentiated hepatocellular carcinomas. C11 choline can detect 71% of HCC in patients who are negative for FDG. When we combine the two together, we can detect more hepatocellular carcinoma reported in the literature as up to 93%. Here are some images of a C11 choline uh, PET. It can be labeled with either C11 or F18. Please restart this slide. Here are some images of choline PET. Choline can be uh, labeled with either C11 or F18. These images are of F18 choline PET. Uh, typical sites of prominent uptake include uh, the liver and the pancreas. Other sites of moderate uptake include the spleen over here, the salivary glands, the lacrimal glands, and you can also see mild uptake in the small and large intestines, uh, breasts, and testicles. Choline PET is currently um, seeing increasing use, not so much for oncology, but for non-oncologic parathyroid imaging. Another tracer that's used along with um, FDG for hepatocellular carcinoma is C11 acetate. Uh, similar to choline, it's better for more well-differentiated tumors, while FDG is better for polydifferentiated tumors. They tend to complement each other. So for example, over here, you're seeing nothing, no uptake on FDG. You can see this hyperdensity on the CT images, and on C11 acetate, you can see this focal uptake. In contrast, you can see another hyperdensity here on CT. You can see that there's focal uptake on FDG, but there's no uptake on C11 acetate images. So, as you can see here, image, um, lesions that are not avid for one tracer may be avid for the other. So by combining the two, we can detect about 83% of primary tum uh, tumors and about 86% of metastases. Sensitivity is about 98% and a specificity of about 86%. Here are some images of uh, C11 acetate. Normal uptake is um, usually prominent distribution in the pancreas, which you can see over here. You can also see some uptake in the liver and the spleen over here. So in uh, this patient, uh, these are the FDG images, these are the C11 acetate images. So you can see this uh, HCC, this part of the tumor is quite avid for FDG, but on C11, it's not much above background hepatic activity. Similarly, this region over here, you can see is more avid for C11 acetate. It's greater than hepatic levels of activity, but the corresponding site on FDG isn't really avid, so they, they complement each other. Gallium-68 PSMA is used for prostate cancer imaging. However, the literature, it has been reported in the literature that it does show uptake for HCC. And in, in this interesting case, um, there was a patient uh, where you have this um, hyperdensity that's not avid for F18 choline. It is avid on PSMA imaging, and it turned out to be well-differentiated HCC. Looking at FDG imaging of renal cell carcinoma, the primary site typically shows more uptake with high-grade papillary renal cell carcinomas compared to low-grade tumors. Sometimes centers like to have different protocols for um, using diuretics or catheterization for patients with renal cell and uh, bladder cancer. Looking at uh, local infiltration, uh, malignant spread can occur uh, through the renal capsule or along the venous vessels. Um, FDG can change management in RCC in about 5% of patients. For uh, nodal disease, uh, metastases can occur in about 9 to 27% of patients and uh, typically to the renal hilum, paraortic, and paracaval lymph nodes. The right kidney typically goes to paracaval and into aortocaval lymph nodes. Uh, left kidney drains to paraortic lymph nodes. Literature has reported FDG sensitivity of about uh, 75 to 87% and a high specificity of 100%. But more studies are probably needed to validate this. Looking at metastases and recurrence, 
common sites of metastases are the lungs um, and less common sites of soft tissue, bone, liver, skin, and uh, CNS. About 20 to 40 percent of patients would develop metastases following nephrectomy. There's limited PET data in assessing these metastases for recurrence. It um, occurs locally in about 5 percent after radical nephrectomy. FDG PET CT and contrast enhanced CT may be complementary in diagnosing recurrent disease. Looking at treatment response, when, uh, FD, when the tumor SCB decreases, patients tend to have longer progression-free uh, survival. With uh, sunitinib or serafinib therapy, a uh, decrease of less than 20% has been reported as having worse prognosis, whereas more than 20% um, after 16 weeks had better overall survival. For FTG imaging of bladder cancer, FTG PET CT has been reported as being more sensitive but less uh, specific than CT imaging. Tumors may be FTG avid with no corresponding thickening on CT images. FTG has changed clinical, can change clinical management in about 68% of patients. Some would be understaged by conventional imaging and others would be overstaged. For nodal metastases, uh, lymph node drainage is typically to external iliac, internal iliac, and uh, presacral lymph nodes. In muscle invasive uh, bladder cancer, PET CT has better sensitivity than ICT for detecting lymph nodes, but more studies are needed to validate this. For distant metastases, sites include the lungs, bones, soft tissue, liver, and adrenals, and kidneys. FTG has been reported as more sensitive for extra pelvic metastases compared to CT. And FTG has been reported as providing more diagnostic information compared that improved clinical management when compared to CT or MRI alone. So in summary, for FTG imaging of gastrointestinal, renal, and bladder cancers, SUV values typically vary from center to center. So publish Numbers may not be applicable in your center, and when you report studies from other centers, you may not be able to compare the SUV values for outside studies. FTG PET CT is typically useful for better staging malignancies. It's often used for assessing response to treatment. It's often used for detecting currents that is not detected on conventional imaging, for hepatocellular carcinoma using dual PET tracers such as FTG and Choline or FDG and C11 acetate may be helpful in better assessing hepatocellular carcinoma. For assessing a bone metastases, a bone scan can be good for screening and can detect disease earlier than radiography. And as we've seen, there are several um, new tracers and new roles for existing radio tracers that are being accessed for oncologic um, imaging for gastrointestinal, renal, and bladder cancers, and we'll probably be seeing more of this in the future, particularly with the growth of theranostics, where you swap out the isotope used for imaging to an isotope used for therapy. Thank you.